These towering facilities and high voltage wires don't spring by themselves. For power to be delivered safely and efficiently, you need good old manpower. From the linemen who risk safety, to the dispatchers who have all the power in their hands, quite literally. In seconds, this is how the operation center responds to the sudden loss of electric power. But did you know that a dip in power supply moves hard-working men to make sure supply remains stable? Kung yung power system ay yung airplane, kami yung mga piloto, yung mga passengers, yun yung mga customer natin. Household residents, commercial, industrial. Kung magkaroon ng disturbance, sa, kung sa power system magkaroon ng mga line tripping, line outages, ang mag-respond yung system dispatcher. Kung sa airplane, yung pilot, kung magkaroon ng turbulence, yung bahala. Working as power dispatchers for more than decades, these men at the heart of energy operations take on the challenge of working beyond what is required of them even if that means less personal and family time. Yung trabaho dito is very crucial. Kasi ang tao, ang nakikita lang nila pag may kuryente or kung walang kuryente. Pag walang kuryente, magtatanong na yan. Pero kapag ka may kuryente, wala siyang nakikita. Hindi niya nakikita yung behind the scene. Ano ba yung kaguluhang ginagawa namin dito sa loob? Para mamintin lang namin yung, yung, ano, yung continuous power flow. Talagang special siya. Kasi iilan lang kami dito sa buong Luzon, dito sa buong Pilipinas. Every day, every hour, every minute niya nagbabago yan. Eh. Uh, minsan may mga disasters. They are the men and women working 24-7 to ensure stable power supply. One switch that you turn on or off triggers a group of individuals to move, operate, monitor, and solve problems in real time. Theirs is a story of dedication, of rendering service, and braving the risk. More than 70 kilometers away from Manila, this group of men in Mexico, Pampanga is equipping themselves with their gears. Their task, restore a broken part of this electric tower. A second of delay means a vital second they could no longer restore. Sinusuporbasan namin yung mga lineman. Nagtatrabaho, gumagawa ng mga linya, at ang line foreman, sila po ang uh, nagbabalidit yung mga report ng lineman kung po pwede ng palitan yung mga poste o mga insulator. This lineman dare to conquer mountains, traverse steep hills, meet with residents to make sure electric towers are maintained. As daunting as it may seem, some people look at it as a dream job. Nakita ko na yung mga lineman parang Namangha ako sa kakayahan nila, umaakyat sila sa mga poste, then gumagawa sila ng mga gawaing lineman tulad ng mga pagpapatoy ng poste, pag lalagay ng mga conductors, gano'n na doon lang sa pag-akyat na gamit yung spikes, ah, talagang manghang-mangha ako, kako, ah, balang araw, pwede ko rin sigurong subukang maging gano'n kung papala rin. Ah, awa ng Diyos, pinalad nga sir, naging lineman ako. So in the event of another power interruption, we know that there are people working double time to restore it. It's a dangerous job, but someone has to do it. And this is their story. Teresa Nudalo, CNN Philippines. There are three major grids, one for each of the three island groups in the country. Luzon and the Visayas are interconnected. By 2020, the plan is to loop in Mindanao the whole archipelago connected in one national grid. Think of electricity like water. If you have a pipe connected to your house, you get water. If you don't, you're left on your own to find your water supply. It's the same for electricity. The grid acts as the pipes between producers like power plants and end users like homes and offices. In the Philippines, every region has its own power grid. The Luzon and Visayas grids are interconnected. They're like next-door neighbors that can share water with each other. Mindanao, however, is isolated. It may have its own water tank, but if that runs out, it won't have anyone to turn to. That's a big problem because Mindanao's power grid already has the least capacity among the three regions. 
It's equivalent to just 15% of what Luzon has. That's why Mindanao has repeatedly been plunged into darkness in recent years, with blackouts as long as 8 hours a day, every day. This has taken its toll on Mindanao's development. The region may have an abundance of land and natural resources, but businesses can thrive if it's short on power. Uh, that was one of the handicaps we had because we were not able to invite uh, manufacturing to Mindanao because of the simple reason that we cannot provide electricity for their operation. It's hard to believe, but transmission towers like these can carry power from as far north as Benguet, down to Pangasinan, down to the San Jose Bulacan substation here, where it gets converted to electricity for Metro Manila. Now, imagine the possibilities if the Luzon grid was connected to the Visayas and the Mindanao grids as well. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP, wants to finally unify the country's power grid, proposing to build a Visayas-Mindanao interconnection. It's a project decades in the making, with plans dating back to the 1980s. They never pushed through because of the difficulty of the geography, the complexity of the technology, and of course, the cost that comes with all of that. But NGCP believes the time has come for a truly national grid. The Vismin interconnection will run from Cebu to Zamboanga del Sur. It's a challenge of distance, with overhead power lines from Sibonga to Santander Cebu on the Visayas side, and from the Pitan Zamboanga del Norte to Aurora Zamboanga del Sur on the Mindanao side. If that isn't tricky enough, NGCP will also have to install submarine cables in the Sulu Sea to bring the two islands together. The interconnection will span close to 280 kilometers. That's even farther than the drive from Manila to Baguio. According to NGCP, it's mission possible and it plans to accomplish it all by 2020. Uh, once we awarded the project, the implementation could be in, in a one to two years time. Year 2020, that's, uh, that is possible with the full support of the stakeholders and the different government agencies. If we're serious about helping Visayas and Mindanao to develop, then we have to give them the power to do it. The entire country stands to benefit as well. With a unified national grid, the Philippines can tap its different power sources at any time. When hydro energy in Mindanao dips during the dry season, Visayas will be rich in solar energy. Luzon, meanwhile, can offer a steady supply of coal and natural gas. We're excited because in other nations than the archipelago, like Hawaii, they are interconnected. So if you're not interconnected, you're not that flexible. A unified national grid can create something more than the sum of its parts. A steady power supply for households and businesses all across Luzon, Visayas, and now Mindanao. With shared power comes shared prosperity. Claire Yao, CNN Philippines. Technology is making the world smaller, and staying connected is now a necessity. Through television and social media, among others, Residents of Luzon are informed about events in Mindanao. People in the Visayas keep tabs on issues in Luzon. So goes for electricity. The goal? One grid to interconnect our archipelago.